tutorial is going to be on how to make those really nice, smooth, uh, smoothly rounded fronts of buttons and uh, identifier objects and things like that. So uh, in this example here, we've got two different buttons set up, two different, um, we're using these in a, as uh, team identifiers for a project. And you'll notice that um, when we look at these things from the side, the one on the left has a flat front and the one on the right is smoothly rounded the entire way. Okay, if we look at these in wireframe, you can see what's going on. You see this one has that flat front here and this one is is smooth all the way to the center. And we get this question a lot because the basic way that uh, Invigorator and Pro Animator model things is with a flat front object and then you add an extrusion bevel shape, uh, a bevel shape to the outside of that. And that only gets you so far because the, you have to make this front face really, really small in order to get a continuously smooth shape off to the edge. And that can oftentimes destroy the base shape that you're looking for. So we have an alternative method here, which I'll show you, which is uh, really crafty and a lot of people don't seem to know about it. So um, it's one of those things you'll probably like a lot. Uh, okay, so first of all, let me tell you why you would want this. Um, whenever you've got a flat front on things, the objects tend to not um, not catch reflections correctly. Like if you look at this thing, you see that flat front really shows up when you've got um, less figured types of objects, and and it doesn't. Um, uh, flat faces are very difficult to catch the reflections and the highlights. Um, rounded faces, on the other hand, are you know super easy to catch highlights from. But those flat faces can really make things uh, dim out and look and sort of go dead in the center. Now this side over here, you see, it's got continuous shading in those reflections, no matter what you're doing. Um, so you see, it's moving across. It's looking really nice, and that's that sort of perfectly round smooth look that we're we're looking for okay because you're now you're gonna get interesting reflections dancing across the whole front of the face uh, highlights too if you catch a highlight on something and then you'll see that it it looks really nice on the edge and then suddenly it just goes zip right across or it like floods out the entire front face of something that again is because of this problem where we've got uh, big areas that are just too doggone flat so let me show you how to make this. I'm just going to turn it off and build another one from scratch. Uh, this one right here, if we switch down to our modeling view, you'll see that what we have is pretty simple. Um, it's just this. It's a rounded uh, rectangle. It's a rounded square in this case. And then it has this bevel profile applied to it, which uh, you know you can just imagine. It's a, it's a quarter round. It's going to start here, and it's going to go out to the edge. And that, indeed, is what we have right here when we take a look at that. right? Okay, so the other way of doing this is a little interesting. Uh, you make the other buttons with a lathe tool. Now, a lathe is this little button right here, uh, or you can go down to up here to Object, Create, Lathe Objects. And what you do with this is this is more like creating a pottery wheel type of effect. So you see the difference between these is quite a lot. It's not as obvious. Um, but once you understand how this thing works, it is super duper powerful. So this is how your lathe object starts out. And you have a profile here, and then you have the shape of the lathe. Now, again, lathe is sort of like pottery wheel effects. So, you know, if you think of this as a, as a pottery wheel, you know, there you go. You've got, a, um, you've got an instant vase just jumping right out at you like that. So that's what people normally think of this as, but it's, it's actually way more useful. So the first thing we need to do is define the shape, uh, the outside edge of this shape, and then we'll define the profile. So here's how we're going to do that. Down here is where we define the shape of the outside edge, it's sort of like the shape of the wheel. If you're looking down on the wheel from the top, uh, the pottery wheel looks round like this, right? Well, we can change this. We can um, adjust it like this or this or this. And you see, as I'm doing all that, it's actually changing the shape. So instead of like um, just trying to drag it into position, let's use one of our nice tools here. This third tool over is the rounded rectangle tool. So um, I, I can't click here. If I click here, it's going to move the entire object. But I can click outside of this like this and start dragging and then hold down the space bar to reposition where this thing starts. So um, I'm going to move it to about right there and then let go of the space bar and then continue dragging and let go. Okay, so there we go. Uh, now you'll see we've 
change the shape of this, but of course we have two separate profiles going on. So switching back to our selection tool, I'm going to pick the middle one, which is the path selection tool, and then click on this one right here. That's our old one. And now you see I end up with both these selected. So I'm going to deselect and then select just that one so that the um, the rounded rectangle is going to be blue. That means it's not selected. And then the inner old uh, pottery wheel lathe shape is in red. And once I've got it red, I can just hit the delete key and everything goes away and I'm left with this. So I've now set the base shape for the profile. Uh, the cool thing is that since this is a rounded rectangle, I can adjust the size of this thing at any time in the future. Okay, so let's leave it a little sharp right now and make this back smaller and now let's get the outside shape. So this is going to be the shape uh, you see if we look at this from above there's that shape right there and we look at it from the side uh, there's that shape right there. Good, so back to our point select tool what we're going to do now is um, click to deselect and then come over here pick up just the end point and put it on the seal snap right to the center. You don't want it clear over here you don't want it missing. If it's missing it's going to create a flat edge right in the center like that. See that little flat guy right there? Yeah, we don't want that. Uh, so we're going to bring it over and snap it right to the center of the axis. And then this one, we're going to bring this out and drop it right there. And that's going to be the bottom of our shape. So now you see it's starting to look more like what we want. Okay, from the top, you'll see this little dot right in the center, this little pinchy dot. Okay, we don't want that, and that's because it's coming in at an angle. So this bezier handle here needs to be exactly in line. See if I've got it down too far it'll create a point and uh, if I have it up above this center line it's going to be a valley. So just hold down the shift key. When you hold down the shift key it'll snap this guy to exactly 90 degrees and then you've got it like that. Okay, So that's a good point. Uh, this one also will bring this up and snap it up. So now we've got this shape and you see that's there's our shape right there. Okay so uh, it's now time to sort of fine-tune what's going on. Looks like I can bring this guy down a bit. Okay, that's a little closer. Okay, so it's time to fine-tune this. Now you'll notice that lathe objects are built up and down. Um, extrude uh, shape type objects are built sort of like they're standing up on the wall. So we need to fix that. So this guy, let's rotate him up. So we're going to tweak him into position, select the object tool and this rotator and then we start pulling him up and once we get him you know relatively close then we can look down here in the object controls and in the info area if you open up the info area and then you can see how the rotations are working so this one's closest to 90 so let's just type in 90 there hit 0 for Y and Z is already 0 and at this point now uh, they're exactly both aligned and sent and uh, standing up so that's good. Uh, the next thing then is to make it the right size. So let's um, again go back here and slide this guy over. Uh, we have use local drag using objects axis. Probably we want to keep that turned on. Oh, but um, okay, this is a little odd because it's flipped up on its side now. Um, it's going to want to make up and down go in and out. Got that? That's because it was originally it's using its original objects axis. So if you don't want to do that you can come down here and just um, adjust X, Y, and Z based on these numbers here. So we'll put it so about the backs are about lined up here like that. I keep I keep flipping over to the cam camera tumble tool and uh, and then here let's turn on 12 field grid and then align these guys so we can pull this guy down to about there at the bottom and it's lined up. How about that? So that was pretty good. Okay, 12 field grid, turn that off. And now we've got, these are the same height and the same width, but see they still look a lot different. Um, let's look at this from the side. You know, that's actually pretty good. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. So you see if we make this shorter That'll flatten it out a little bit. Uh, if we make it taller, you know, it'll of course make it thicker. So find something that's about matching. And now let's look at some of the other details in this. So um, 
what we have here now is you can sort of see a little bit of shading that's a little bit tough, right? It's, it's, it's smooth, but it's not real super smooth. And there's two reasons why this is happening. Um, the biggest reason is because this, you see how it's coming up and it's just barely reaching um, horizontal once it gets to the top. So by taking this Bezier handle and stretching it out a little bit, I can flatten that all out and make that look much better. Uh, the next thing is the size of the rounding. So if we come over here and go to our rounding, uh, the more round it makes. See, if I make it, you know, obviously, if I'm making it really sharp, I end up with these sharp little edges. So the more round we make it, the more this is going to smooth out. So, like, at some point here, maybe about right there, it's a pretty good match. And boy, that looks really smooth. See, now it's a nice sort of pillow effect. Okay, so that's it. Uh, you now know how to make these type of buttons. Now, there's all sorts of things you can do once you've got this basic idea set up. Um, for instance, you can take, and if you take this little handle here and just turn it out, you know what's going to happen is you're going to end up with an undercut. So now you end up with uh, this type of a look which now it's got shading all the way around the outside edges too if you ever need to see the backside. See this one sort of comes down and then stops. This one is going to go all the way around to the back. So that's one nice thing you can do with this. Um, another thing is that you can pull this even flatter and make it sort of like a depressed button. Alright, so this is still going to be all nice and roundy, but um, you know what, let's apply a material to this so you can see what's going on. I believe I've got the same material. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Now, um, to link these two things together, you know, if if you just drag this and drop it onto there, it's going to make a copy. So if you hold down Option when you drag and drop this thing, it's going to make the ex it's going to link. So now we're using the exact same material for the front and the side there. So wow, look at that. See that really brings that alive. See how nice and smooth that is, and how the the reflections just dance all the way across the front of that. Okay, very nice, very puffy. Um, let's see, back to modeling. So one of the things you could do is you could pull it up like this, and now you've got this um, this really nice sort of, you know, it's a um, it's a pin cushion look. Um, or I should say maybe like an, an upholstered look. So we can pull this in in this direction, and you end up with this sort of look. So again, lots of stuff you can do. If you double click on a line, you can add an extra little point here and really make um, interesting sorts of shapes. So you get the idea. It goes all over the map after this point. Uh, double click to remove that. Let's bring it back up about there. And again, hold our shift key down to move that guy out. OK, so there you go. That's how it works. Um, let's see, if we go back to our material editor and turn the color back on, uh, the one last thing that needs to happen here is setting the mapping. So uh, we've got this set up, it's set to UV proportional by default, but what we're going to want to do is set this to planar. Now remember, this started life um, standing up and down, and we want it to now sort of go in a different direction. So and when we rotated it over. So we're going to need to put this uh, <laughs> probably from the top. If we do it from the top, then everything ends up going right where it's supposed to be. Oh, that's sweet. And we can reduce the scale a little bit on that. And uh, that's where we have it. Of course, you can always come over here and add splits. And then come in, let's see, let's add um, like two to the back over here. You can see up here as we're adjusting that, how it's going to fall into position. And then we need a little place for the white one. So we'll bring the white, drop that down there. OK. And then one more little split for the gold. And we'll drop that in, say, about there. There we go. And now we can pull this down so it matches pretty close like that. OK, back to this one, and rotate it back to the front, and then uh, let's scale this back a little bit. <laughs> I hit the space bar. There was an animation set up for this. OK, so there we go. So uh, that's basically what we have then. Oop, this thing shifted. 
Okay, let's go back and reset this to front. Sweet. Okay, great. Uh, so that's it. That's how you get that perfectly smooth front face on your um, buttons or shapes. Oh, you know, one more, one other thing. I, I said you can go anywhere, right? Well, I mean literally anywhere. Uh, let's go back to this because, of course, you can always change the shape of this guy right here too. Uh, let's say, let's say you wanted this to be any sort of a shape. We could make this an oval too. So you see, if we pull this thing down, uh, turn that into an oval, and then deselect. I'm sorry, delete this uh, rounded rectangle like that. See, now I end up with a completely smooth oval shape. All right, just like that. Wow, super easy, super fast using the lathe tool in ProAnimator or 3D Invigorator.